2.9, what does f prime say about f? So we've seen before that if the derivative is positive on an interval, then f is increasing on that interval. f prime positive means that the function is increasing. The same thing if f prime is negative, then the function is decreasing. So from a to b, we see that f prime is positive. From b to c, we see that f prime is negative. And from c to d, we again see that f prime is positive. f increasing, f decreasing, f increasing. In general, we know f prime positive means f is increasing. And this is key in being able to draw the function and its derivative. So if we are given the graph of the derivative f prime, what can we say about f? Well, here's the derivative. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at the next slide. And let's try and draw the function f. So remember, this is f prime. Then what does f look like? Well, if we were to just kind of jot down a little number line on our side, we know that f prime is 0 at negative 1 and at 1. For values less than negative 1, the derivative was positive. We had positive values. The y values were positive. The y values were positive. Between negative 1 and 1, our y values were negative that entire time. And for x values greater than 1, we have positive. So since our derivative went from positive to negative, we have a max at negative 1. And we have a min at x equals 1. What else do we know? We know that f prime prime equals 0 here. In other words, we have an inflection point right there. And so at negative 1, we have a max. And we don't really know where it is right now. We have a min. And what else did they tell us? They told us f is 0 equals 0. So we know the point 0, 0. And we also know that's an inflection point. So it's changing concavity there. So our function was unhappy. And then it becomes happy at 0. So for now, drawing something like that is going to be just fine. As we go on, we'll get into more of how we know how much it goes up here and, you know, how we know how much it changes. But just as an introduction, here is the derivative, so you're just drawing the derivative. You'll note that, you know, at um, maybe, let's say this is x equals negative 2, for instance. At x equals negative 2, we see f prime equals 1. At x equals negative 2, we see that f prime equals 1, because that's the point. At x equals negative 2, we see that f prime equals 1. And so what does that mean? That means if we go down to our function, then at x equals negative 2, the slope of our tangent line should be 1. And so that is how you get a really good idea of what this thing looks like and how the rates change over time. So here I just kind of summarized what I just said to you. What else do we know? The slope of this curve 
drawn here, becomes progressively larger as x increases, and so the curve bends upward. Such a curve is called concave upward, and we've talked about that. f prime prime is greater than zero means that f prime is increasing It's constantly increasing. So it doesn't matter that f prime started off negative. Over time, it's becoming more and more positive. f prime is increasing. We have to make that connection very easily. f prime prime is greater than zero means that f prime is increasing, which means that the function is concave upward. The same thing for concave downward. f prime prime is negative means that f prime is decreasing, which means that the function is concave downward. It means that the rates of change over time are getting more and more and more negative. So this is just in summary, concavity. f prime prime is greater than zero means that f is concave upward. And an inflection point is anywhere a curve changes its direction of concavity. So concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up. So the easiest way to check for an inflection point is make a sign chart of f prime prime and look for where it changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. Sketch a possible graph of a function that satisfies the following conditions. First of all, we know that the function is increasing from negative infinity to 1 because of this. They're synonymous. And we know that the function is decreasing from 1 to infinity. Okay. We know that the function is concave up from negative infinity to negative 2 and 2 to infinity from this. And we know that the function is concave down on negative 2 to 2 from this. The limit as x approaches negative infinity is negative 2 means that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 2, right? Because as my x value gets teeny tiny, my y is approaching negative 2. So that means I have a horizontal asymptote on the left side over here. And then I have another one on the right side at 0. So there's that horizontal asymptote. Okay, so what else do we know? We know also if it's changing from concave up to concave down at negative 2 and at 2, then we know inflection points are at x equals negative 2 and 2 because that's where it's changing concavity. So that's coming from that. So I think that's enough information to get going. From negative infinity to 1, we know the function's increasing. And we know that it hit this horizontal asymptote, so it's going up somewhere. Um, let's see what other information we have. We know that it's decreasing from 1 to infinity. So we also know that, I guess, from these two pieces of information, we know that it's going, f prime is going from positive to negative, so we have a max at x equals 1. It doesn't tell us where this thing starts. It doesn't tell us any points at all, so all right, let's just make a max somewhere. And so again, we said that the function was increasing the whole time over this interval, and we want it to have this horizontal asymptote, so we're just going to draw that in. We had an inflection point at negative 2. So let's say it was happy, and then it became unhappy starting there. So you can kind of see that my function was 
happy and then it became unhappy over around negative two. And then what's happening, it's decreasing. There's another inflection point at two. So my function started off unhappy and then let's make it start getting happy around two and it levels off there. So here I have an inflection point and here I had an inflection point and here I have a max and my horizontal asymptotes hold. So that's what you need to see in your graph. The rest, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. We don't really know any more information, but you must show your max. Um, your inflection points should be shown. It was happy, it started getting sad around there. Um, it was sad and it started getting happy around two. So you need to just show those features and um, that's a good start to your graph. Antiderivatives require us to go backwards, so instead of finding a derivative, we want to find antiderivative. We want to find the function such that the derivative of that function would bring us back. So um, the antiderivative function is defined by a big F. So let F be an antiderivative of this function here. So this basically is our derivative. So now we're looking at the derivative function. So where is f increasing? Well, f is increasing where its derivative is positive. Remember that the derivative is now just our f function. So in this example here, we see this happens um, from zero on. It looks like the f function that was drawn is positive. Where is f concave upward or downward? Well, f is concave upward where f prime prime. So remember, we go, in this example, we go f, f, f prime. So this one is going to tell us about our concavity. Right? So if f prime is greater than zero, which means that f is increasing, right? And so where is f increasing? Well, f is increasing from zero to one, and then one, two, three, three, to infinity. Similarly, big F is concave downward, where little f prime is less than zero, which means that f is decreasing, and that happens from one to three. At what values of x does f have an inflection point? So that's just where we change concavity. So that's easy. That's just at x equals 1 and at x equals 3. Okay, in part D, they're asking us to sketch the graph of f of the antiderivative given f of 0 equals 1. So let's go ahead and look at the next slide to do that. And I've drawn um, two graphs, just one below the other. So here's the derivative. We want to go and draw the function. So. We know that the derivative is positive the entire time. Since the derivative is positive entire time, f is increasing over the entire interval. Okay, what else did we say? We said that we had inflection points at one and at three, and it told us that f of zero equals one, and so we had an inflection point, I'm just gonna draw to remind myself, we had an inflection point there, and then we had another one at three. 
okay? So again, remember, the function has to be increasing the entire time. So remember, here are the slopes. So remember, this is just telling us something about the slope. So our slope began around zero, and then it increased to about one here. So my slope is about one here. So I'm just gonna draw in a tangent line of one around there. It started around zero, and then it uh, went to around one. Okay, and then here is my inflection point. And so it was increasing. The slope was getting larger and larger and larger, and then the slope started getting smaller. So it was concave up, and then it became concave down because my slope is getting smaller now. So it's concave down until here, in which case my slope started increasing again. So I went to concave up again. So that's a good little approximation of what my graph would look like. So make sure you can see that it was concave up and then it became concave down from one to three and then from three on it's concave upward again. And um, you're good to go. And so on the last slide you just see some possible antiderivative curves if you weren't given that initial condition. And that's it for this lesson.